Hello, and welcome to my mod list showcase, where I give an overview and opinion on mod lists to help find the right one for you. This time, we're looking at Norvus, created by user Vector, released for Skyrim Anniversary Edition. The version I've been playing on is version 4.5.3, released on the 18th of August 2022, and you can check on their Discord linked below for any changes and updates. Firstly, what is Norvus? Their website describes it as a modding guide which has been designed to enhance Skyrim's atmosphere while keeping the game lore friendly, with next generation graphics, enhanced gameplay, and support for multiple types of characters. Novus is available to download from its own website, with the option to either install manually or use their own automatic installer. I followed the step-by-step -step guide for the automatic installer and found it to be incredibly clear and simple. And before the install is underway, you can tweak some settings so the list best suits you, such as performance options, a toggle for nudity, hardcore mode, and more. With around 1,600 mods, you'll need close to 300GB of storage to download. And once in-game, setting up the mod menu and key bindings is quick and easy, again with a guide provided. Now for what the mod list adds. For this showcase, I'll be showing clips taken throughout my current playthrough. I've spent plenty of time with this list, and so I have a good grasp on what it's like to play. As you can see, this list is visually striking, overhauling the entire landscape to feel entirely new, while also keeping to Skyrim's overall tone. The base of all textures are provided by mods like Noble Skyrim and Skyrim 2020 Parallax, although hundreds of smaller mods are layered on top to improve the detail and sharpness. Part of what makes the world feel different from vanilla are the new trees. Mods like the Jedi Trees, Blobos Pines, Treeific, and more, all include new tree models which add a ton of depth to the world. Plus trees have been added to the more barren areas, such as the plains outside Whiterun. And the same goes for the general foliage, where rather than seeing the same grass texture over and over, loads of variation has been added, with mods like Tamrialic Grass, Volkvanger, and Vedosbron Regions. Not sure if I said those right, but yeah. Not only is there tons of new vegetation, but also the Seasons of Skyrim mod is included, which changes the scenery to fit the time of year, and as of making this video, it's being improved further with version 5 of this list, which you can preview on the author's YouTube channel. Then there's weather, with mods like Obsidian Mountain Fogs, Supreme Rainstorms, Wonders of Weather, and Ethereal Clouds are all working together to vastly improve the vanilla weathers, while sticking with the usual tones and lighting mods like Lux and EMB Light help bring the landscape to life, with accurate lighting around all the trees, and darker interiors that aren't too dark. As for the EMB, the Paicho EMB has been included, which aims for added realism and sharpness, and it's paired with Novus's own reshade preset, which emphasises the cold and Nordic feeling of Skyrim. Now to address the performance. You can probably take a look at this list and get a good idea if your PC is up for the challenge. The recommended specs suggest an Intel Core i7 or AMD equivalent, a 1080Ti with 10GB of VRAM, 16GB of RAM, and an SSD, although these specs vary depending on which version of the list you install. I myself am running an RTX 3080, however, it doesn't have 10GB of VRAM, plus I was running at 1440p ultrawide, so I'll admit, when I was downloading the graphics intensive version of this list, I was preparing for the worst, but I was actually quite surprised. In snowy areas when walking in the wilderness, I could hold around 50 FPS. It's usually when I went into towns and cities that I felt the hit, often dropping 10 to 20 frames. However, with the Novus Performance version, I held around 60 FPS in most areas, and the drop in quality really isn't too noticeable. If you look at my video called The Beauty of Nolvis, that's the graphics intensive list running at max settings, whereas the gameplay from this video is mostly from the performance option. So yeah, when you go to install, definitely read all the options to figure out which version of the list will run best for you. Nolvis builds upon what was offered in the base game, making many of the mechanics more in-depth, 
and enhancing the role-playing to really make the world feel like a real place. For perks, this list uses the Ordinator mod, which adds and tweaks over 400 perks to make them new and interesting, and just really lets you spec into a very specific playstyle. Then with the mod Experience, it makes it so you primarily gain XP from completing quests and killing monsters, rather than levelling up your skills. When it comes to specialising your character, the mod Sum Assist adds 120 new enchantments to the game. Andromeda replaces the vanilla standing stone effects with new abilities for every stone, and patron gods of Skyrim allow you to enter the Blackfall Temple and choose to worship a god, each offering different abilities. The complete Crafting Overhaul Remastered mod has also been included, which tweaks aspects of the smithing to be more balanced, such as new crafting recipes, which feel more appropriate for the item they're making. Plus the equipment durability system means that weapons and armour will slowly degrade over time, if you don't keep them repaired. And it pairs nicely with the Honed Metal mod, which makes it so blacksmiths and mages will be able to craft, temper and enchant your equipment, for a price. Also, the complete alchemy and cooking overhaul is included, which balances potion making and adds new foods for cooking. If you wish to trade these newly made items, the Trade and Barter mod means that prices will vary depending on your location, race, speechcraft, and so on. And finally, a number of survival mods are included, such as Frostfall, I Need, and Keep It Clean, which means you have to take care of your character with eating, sleeping, and cleaning, as well as wearing appropriate clothing for the weather. So overall, Norvus adds more depth into the gameplay, and allows for more character build variety, which really immerses you into the world without overwhelming you with new stuff. Combat has had a huge amount of changes, making it far more complex than the basic sword swinging of vanilla. One of the main combat mods is Worldcat, which comes with a ton of features, but just to name a few, the AI is more smarter and aggressive, Stamina needs to be managed more carefully, as having no stamina will slow the character. Blocking at the right moment provides more benefits. There's new types of injuries and staggers that affect you and the enemy, and much more. This is then paired with Sekiro Combat, which aims to bring the fast-paced and flashy combat of Sekiro to Skyrim. For example, timed blocks regain your stamina, while damaging enemy stamina and staggering them. And enemies can also deflect your attacks. It's worth noting that I'm someone who can't make it past the first hour of Sekiro, but I was alright with this mod, so it's not as difficult as a Souls game. Also, third person has been made into a much more viable playstyle, with mods like Smooth Cam and True Directional Movement, improving the look and feel of third person fighting. Lastly, a bunch of mods affect enemy variety and behaviour. Mortal enemies remove the aimbot-like attacks of creatures, and imposes movement limits on NPCs while they're attacking. Ultimate Combat adds new type of attacks for enemies, such as dashes and new animations. Smart NPC Potions allows for NPCs to carry and use potions during combat. And finally, the Obis mod adds a huge amount of new bandit variety, with new looks, new loot, and new movesets. All these mods make combat into a far more detailed aspect of Skyrim, but does feel fair and balanced, if you take the time to get used to the changes. Perhaps the largest and most popular quest mod added is Legacy of the Dragonborn, which adds new quests, new items, a new museum, new guilds, and even more into Skyrim, all seamlessly integrated into the world. Plus entire new lands are included, with mods such as Worm's Tooth and Volscar, adding in hundreds of hours of new content. And loads of smaller quests have also been added, with missives adding in notice boards with little tasks to complete. And the Immersive World Encounters mod adds around 100 new random events and side quests scattered about Skyrim. As for changes to the landscape itself, the Great Cities mod collection overhauls every city to be far more dense, with new buildings and items, and makes them feel like places people could actually live. And the same goes for smaller towns, with many being expanded into far larger settlements. And finally, a number of new player homes have been included, all of which have high quality and placed naturally into the world.
Hours of new music has been included, with mods such as Chapter 2, Still, and Melodies of Civilization. And with most of them, you can find the new tracks on their Nexus page, to see if it's for you. And with the general audio, immersive sounds and audio overhaul for Skyrim make the world come alive with new realistic and natural sounds. Have a listen for yourself. Either the textures or models have been updated for every wearable in the game, with mods like armour and clothing extension adding more variety to NPCs while sticking to the feeling of Skyrim's world. And new individual armour sets are also included, such as the high quality Northern God armour and Fur armour set. And the same goes for new weapons, with new realistic shapes and textures added to the existing armoury. And loads of mods are included which add in a special weapon to find in Skyrim, so you can always find something which feels truly unique to you. Then finally, over 200 new spells have been added, with the Apocalypse and Trimverate mods, providing new build options and mage archetypes. And they're combined with the Odin mod to balance and fix many of the existing spells. For some other notable changes, the AI Overhaul mod makes a bunch of changes to NBC behaviour, such as more interactions with the scenery around them, and returning home when it's raining. Convenient horses makes the horse mechanics far less janky, with new behaviours, training, encumbrance system, and more. Vampire and werebeast playstyles have also been improved, with the Growl and Sacrosanct mods. Immersive spell learning means you'll have to take the time to research and read tomes before learning a spell. And finally, the Quick Loot mod adds the simple looting system from Fallout 4. Now for some additions to the list, but first I must stress, any changes you make to the list has nothing to do with the mod list author. You should only do so if you have an understanding of modding and accept that any consequences are yours to deal with. So with how many mods this list adds, it's hard to suggest any additions especially any which alter the landscape, as I can imagine things becoming incompatible real quick. You'll probably be fine with adding new weapons, but when it comes to armours, you want to make sure the warmth rating can be applied with the Frostfall mod. I also believe it's possible to swap out the EMB, but the methods of doing so change depending on whether you install manually or with the installer. And for those with ultrawide like me, the install guide explains how to make it compatible, as a final note, the CGO Stripped mod has been enabled, which basically adds a slight sway to your character as you move around. I know a lot of people like this, but for me it gives a bit of motion sickness, and so I easily switched it off in the CGO mod menu. People have been asking me to play Nolvus for a long time, and now I can see why. While the modded gameplay is great, what really sold me on the list was the world. As someone who's played Skyrim over and over, Norvus really returns that sense of wonder and exploration. It's not like it's a total conversion of the landscape, but just things like stumbling upon what's usually a small village, and finding it to be converted into its own little town, really made me want to spend time looking around. With a more in-depth gameplay, complex combat, and a landscape that's ever-changing, it feels like a living, breathing world, where you can tell that life goes on around you, whether you interact with it or not. I know the word immersive has sort of lost its meaning over the years, because it's just used so much, but this truly is one of the most immersive lists I've played. The only downside is that Norvus takes a decent PC to run, but if you think your PC is up to the challenge, then I recommend this list to anyone craving a new Skyrim experience, especially those who enjoy role-playing their character as they explore a vast fantasy world. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps the channel grow, and if you have any lists you want me to cover, feel free to tell me in the comments. 
I also have a Twitch where I plan on playing some relaxing games, it's going to happen soon. And a Discord if you want to talk about mod stuff or anything else. Other than that, big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Alec Bentley, Joey, Emperor Door Wolf, Jack Ma, Michael Eric and Christian Howell. So with your contributions I'm able to uh, produce as much as I do and you're just such a big help and uh, I can't thank you enough so thank you, thank you and uh, thank you. And I also have a coffee account if you want to give just little one-time donations. And thank you to Snakes RC who gave me a little contribution the other day. This is a bonus bit for anyone who stuck to the end of the video. While I was recording, the uh, ceiling right above me uh, cracked open and water started pouring on top of my desk. So uh, here's the, a brief recording that where you can hear the moment it happened. Then I recommend this list to anyone craving a new Skyrim experience, especially those who enjoy role-playing their character. Ah! Shit!